Okay, this is a continuation of section 2.3 for Mac 1105 in the problem that we were just finishing up. We had discussed several ways to think about slope, considering rise over run, which would give us a 4, and also how to use the two-point formula for slope that we practiced on the previous page. And we did that just to verify the slope that was given. Then we were asked to give an equation for the entire line, which does include the slope, and we were using this formula, which is called the point-slope form of an equation of a line. So we decided we would be plugging in for y1, x1, and also slope. We were told what to plug in. We were asked to plug in this as the point. So this would, that would mean that this is x1 and this is y1, and this for a slope of 4, which we did down here. And we ended up getting, let's clean this up a little bit, uh, y minus 3 is equal to 4 times x plus 1. And you can leave it like that if they're okay with what's called point-slope form. If they want you to get it in this form, this is called slope-intercept form. And you can see what's different about it is that the y is isolated. Everything is on the other side. So wait for them. Wait to see when the instructions ask you to put the equation of the line in slope-intercept form, and then you'll know you need to get it like this. Sometimes they'll request, many times they'll request, that you put it in both forms. So for instance, find the equation of the line that passes through negative 5, 4, and has a y-intercept of negative 2. Now if you have a negative uh, y-intercept of negative 2, that's right here. That point is known as 0, negative 2. And then, of course, this line also goes through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, 4. Okay, so this is your line. You're being asked to give the equation of the line, but regardless of the formula that you use, you need a slope, whether you use this formula or whether you use the formula called the point-slope formula. Both require a slope. So it's a good thing that they gave you the y-intercept because you can use that y-intercept information and the fact that you have an x and a y-coordinate. And then this other point that they gave you means that you have two points and therefore you can find your own slope. So oftentimes, rather than them giving you the slope, you'll be finding it yourself. I'm going to go from these numbers to these numbers. Y's on top. So the Y's are 4 and negative 2. But you can always try going from here to here to see that you get the same, same answer. So Y's are 4 and negative 2. X's moving in the same direction are negative 5 and 0. So this would be 4 plus 2, which is 6. Negative 5 take away nothing is negative 5. So we have a slope of negative 6 fifths. Then if we want to write, <clears throat> we have already graphed. If we want to find the equation of the line using this formula, since we've just been introduced to it, we'll go y is equal to the slope, which was negative 6 fifths, and you can put that negative wherever you want, times x plus the y-intercept. This is the y-intercept. It's that y-coordinate of this point. I just wrote it as a point just so you would realize you have two y's and two x's in order to get the slope. So that y-intercept is just negative 2 in an equation, even though there's a plus, but a plus followed by a minus combines into just a single minus. So in the most simplified sense, you could give this equation as negative 6 fifths x minus 2. And that is the equation of a line. But this time, I've left it in slope-intercept form. It reveals the slope and the y-intercept. whereas this one up here was left in point-slope form. Okay, moving to the next page. Let's see what we have over there. We have um, a problem where we need to provide the slope and the y-intercept of the line whose equation is given, then graph the equation. 
Okay, if you're going to be able to tell what the slope and the y-intercept is, then you need to put it in slope-intercept form. That is what we just learned on the previous page. This is called the slope-intercept form because it actually reveals those two things, the slope and the y-intercept. The slope is the m that you're seeing, and the y-intercept is the b value. That would be this and this in the formula, but let's get our equation to look like this. So we're going to start off with 2y is equal to negative 8x plus 10, but we're going to take our equation and make it look like slope-intercept form, where the y, the y is completely isolated. So in other words, all we have to do is divide that 2 right off of the y so that the y is completely by itself, and then it would be in slope-intercept form, and we'll be able to tell the slope and the y-intercept. Okay, so the 2's cancel, and we can split this up, negative 8x divided by 2, and then we also have positive 10, and that 2 also is the divisor of the 10. So in the end, we have negative for x, there's our slope, and the 5 is the y-intercept. This is the slope, the coefficient of x, this is the y-intercept. Okay, so, so I would just write it, I would just remove it. It's the negative 4. It doesn't include the variable, just the coefficient and its sign. And then the y-intercept is... Five. So let's let's graph using those two things rather than plotting points. So if you're going to graph using these two pieces of information, you start with the y-intercept. It's always your starter. So that would be one, two, three, four, five. You're starting right there. And then if you want to use this slope, you got to think of it as rise over run. Think of it as a fraction. Now, rise can either mean up if it's positive, if this top number, which is the rise, if that top number is positive, you will rise up. If that top number is negative, you will rise down. Rise just means vertical movement, up or down. The bottom number is called the run. And if that run number is positive, you'll run to the right. Whereas if it's negative, you'll run, you'll move to the left. It is just horizontal movement. So I am going to rise down 4 because of the negative right there. So it's going to be down 1, 2, 3, 4, putting me at negative 1, but don't forget to also do your run. I'm going to run one space to the right, and I have done a rise of negative 4 and a run of positive 1. And that's it. Once you have two points, you have enough to graph your line. Don't forget to put these arrows on the end to indicate that the line runs on indefinitely in both directions. Okay, so I have the equation. I identified the slope and the y-intercept, and I used the slope and the y-intercept to go ahead and graph that line. In the next example, it talks about finding the equation of a line that passes through both of these points, Give the equation in point slope using the point slope formula and also in slope intercept form. So now they're asking us to give both. Both formulas require the slope. So we're going to start by finding the slope that we need in order to come up with these answers in A and B. So first it's going to be slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's get that slope to happen. I'm going to put my minuses in first and then go and plug in my y values and my x values. Um, I'm going to start with mm, this y value, negative 3, and then go get that one. So negative 3 and 6. Since I went from these numbers to these numbers, I'm going to do that again because that's what messes it up if you switch the direction in the middle of the problem. My x's are 4 and negative 2. 4 and negative 2. So now on the top, negative 3, take away 6 is negative 9. And then 4 plus 2 would be 
six, and then this reduces to three goes into the top three times, three goes into the bottom twice, and it is negative. So we have our slope. Then the next thing we're going to do is in part A, we're going to use the point slope formula, which is y minus y1. So all we did here is the slope. Here we're going to do point slope equation of a line. <clears throat> okay, there's my formula, and here I go plugging in. When you go and plug into this, you need to pick one point. Either use this one or this one. That's your pick. I'm going to use negative 2, 6. So it'll be y minus the y-coordinate of the point that I've chosen. My slope turns out to be negative 3 halves. And then it's x minus the x-coordinate. Remember, this plays the role of x sub 1. This plays the role of y sub 1. So that x sub 1 would be minus 2. Cleaning that up just a bit, that would be negative 3 times x plus 2 and y minus 6. And you can actually leave it like this for point slope form. Then in part b, you're being asked to give the slope intercept form of the equation. So if you do want to go um, with that, I mean, there's a couple ways you can go. You can go from this, or you can go and come and look at the picture and notice that the y-intercept is 3. That would, this would be the easier way to go, so in part b. Note the formula first, just to get you focused on what do I need to get this answer done. I need a slope, which we've already established is negative 3 halves, times x, and I need a y-intercept, which the picture provides us with. The line cuts right through the y-axis at 3, so that y-intercept is 3. So this is the equation of the line, but in slope-intercept form. Okay, so this is point slope form. This one is slope intercept form. Slope intercept form equation of a line. Okay, as we move forward with the next example, it says find the equation of a line that has a slope of negative three fifths and passes through this point. Give the equation again in point slope form, but also in slope intercept form. So this one, we're going to have to work from the first, the answer that we get in part A to get part B because we don't have this nice picture that came with the previous example where you could see the y-intercept. So I've chosen this problem so you can see what to do when you don't have a picture. Okay, so we already have our slope, so we're ready to go into point slope formula, which again is y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. The x and y coordinate play the role of x1 and y1. <laughs> so it's going to be y minus the y coordinate, which is negative 4. Then we'll have the slope, which is negative 3 fifths. And then we'll have x minus the x coordinate, which is 10. Okay, cleaning up this double negative, it would be y plus 4 is equal to negative 3 fifths <coughs> times x minus 10. And you can leave it like that for point slope form. Then moving into slope intercept form, when I was doing the previous problem, I just looked and grabbed the y intercept there and I was able to write the equation very easily, but this time I don't have a picture, so I can't see what the y-intercept is. So I'm going to have to take what I have thus far <clears throat> and get it in this form right here, which just means that you need to isolate the y value. So if that is the case, <clears throat> I'm going to take the equation I have and I'm going to subtract 4 from this side as well as this side. So that would give me y is equal to, the 4s would be gone, and I would have, I'm going to get rid of these parentheses also, 
I'm going to carry that through this negative 3 fifths right through to the x. So negative 3 fifths times x. I would have that. Then I would have negative 3 fifths.